Welcome to the Tuesday edition of the St. Mark Spark. I'm glad that you can join us this afternoon as we uh, begin this time together. I'm going to read from the Psalm of the day, which is Psalm uh, 42. It's just read the first part of it, and then um, we will uh, discuss a little bit of that, then go into our main reading. As a deer longs for flowing streams, my soul longs for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and behold the face of God? My tears have been my food day and night, while people say to me continually, Where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul, how I went with the throng and led them in procession to the house of God, with glad shouts and songs of thanksgiving, a multitude-keeping festival, why are you cast down, O oh my soul? And why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my help and my God. May this God's word speak to our hearts, our minds, our spirits. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now this has always been a favorite psalm of mine and, and probably of many of you. In fact, there's the the hymn the, that we sang at church, we sang in youth group when I was growing up, as the deer uh, longs for, or as the deer longs for flowing streams, as the deer pants for the water, so my soul longeth after you. The important thing here is that this is a psalm that at first, if we just read the first two verses, we would say, what a beautiful psalm, what an uplifting psalm. But as the psalmist goes in, as you go deeper into what the psalmist is writing about in this passage, you realize that this is not a this is not a a psalm like we have of in the twenty third psalm that says, "You lead me beside still waters, meaning I can get a a drink in safety." Instead, this is a psalm that is crying out from parched lands. This are this is a psalm that is crying out from cracked lips and from a dry mouth, saying, "I am." dying for God to be close. I am dying for this cool drink of water that is God's presence with me. I remember, I remember the, the good times. I remember uh, so long ago how, how, and maybe you can have this as well, about going to the house of God with glad shouts and songs of thanksgiving, a multitude, multiple, uh, a multitude keeping festival. Well, it has been um, four months Let's see, April, May, June, July, August, almost five months since we have been able to gather together. And you hear the, the psalmist saying, I remember how good that was. And maybe that's where you're at today. Saying, you know, maybe I took worship for granted. Maybe I took uh, gathering together in the church building for granted. Maybe you didn't, but but maybe you look back and you, and you say, I want to go to there. I want to go to the place where the, the water is flowing. I want to go to the place where where it's fruitful. I long for God. My soul longs for God the way a deer longs for a flowing stream. My soul longs for God, but not just a God, the living God. And so our main reading today comes to us from John chapter 3, and it's verses 22 and 23, and then we're also uh, picking it up again at verse 30. This is uh, the part of John's gospel. We had just had Jesus meeting with Nicodemus at night. Nicodemus being the great uh, leader, one of the great leaders of, of the society uh, there in Jerusalem. But he comes to Jesus at night. He's curious about Jesus. But the fact that he comes to Jesus at night shows that Nicodemus was in the dark. And that's the earlier part of this chapter is where we hear about Jesus telling Nicodemus that you have to be born again or you have to be born from above. And then later we hear uh, verses uh, 16 and 17, for God so loved the world that God gave God's only son that anyone who believes in him would not perish but would have eternal life. For God did not send God's son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. So, so this is a pretty monumental thing that's going on, a pretty monumental uh, uh, chapter we have in John's gospel and really for for all the whole Bible 
But the gospel continues, and the gospel, after this incredible proclamation by Jesus, in a sense, it's trying to tie up a little bit about what's going on with John the Baptist. John the Baptist, who was who was like an Elijah, who was like the one who came paving the way for Jesus. And so it shifts then to talk less about Jesus, and it starts to talk a little bit more about John, starting at verse 22 of chapter 3. After this, Jesus and his disciples went into the Judean countryside, and he spent some time with them there and baptized. John also was baptized at Ania near Salim, because water was abundant there, and people kept coming and were being baptized. And now the rest of the the story is about a discussion that that is between John's disciples and uh, some of the Jewish folks who are around there and John. And John is saying, I'm not the Messiah. I'm the one sent ahead of him. Don't get me confused uh, as the one who comes before. Don't confuse the messenger with the one who is the message, the embodiment of God's promise, the very embodiment of the living God. And John then says, he must increase but I must decrease. John sees the writing on the wall. John knows what his purpose is. John has run the race, has done what he needs to do, and that John needs to descend as Jesus begins to ascend. Our neighbors are, we have some new neighbors across the street. I've not met them yet. They moved in uh, last night in the middle of the storm, in the middle of the rain, and, and the power was off on their side of the street and it, and it made me think about a little over three years ago when we moved here to Baldwin and about uh, moving in and, and folks from the moving truck moving stuff off but also having friends come in from um, uh, St. Mark friends that we didn't really even know yet that helped us to unpack and to unload and what a blessing that was that's the first thing I remember is is how blessed we were by St. Mark and how blessed we've been since The second thing I remember is how unnaturally hot it was that day. Now, I am from Missouri. I have lived in Missouri. I know what Missouri is like. I know what summers are like, the heat and the humidity. But there's always a week or two weeks in the middle of the summer where it is devilish outside. And this was perhaps the hottest day that we have even experienced here Uh, The heat was there. The humidity was there. But the other thing about that day was it was dry. It was dry. Now, in Missouri, we know we say things are dry or there is a drought. It does not mean that the humidity decreases. The humidity is going to be high uh, no matter what. But we knew that because you're walking across the grass, and that's that crinkly grass. It's that uh, grass that crunches under one's feet. A drought, even though the humidity is there, it's something you can endure, but it means there's going to be bigger problems down the road. It's going to be problems with crops. It's going to be problems with water tables. It's going to be problems with something as simple as the beauty of the leaves and how they they change and how uh, beautiful or, or not as beautiful they are in the fall after a very dry summer. But of course, the dryness of that summer and that day in Missouri is nothing compared to uh, when I moved into uh, our homes in Southern California. Uh, And the weather is generally perfect out there, but the trade-off is that in the Midwest in Missouri, we get the greens and we get the grass and the bushes and the trees and the beauty that is there in the summer. In California during the summertime, it's all replaced with the browns and the tans of the desert. Portable water is the greatest resource, but it's incredibly hard to find. And so I was thinking about that today as we read the passage about deers panting for water. I was thinking about that as we hear the story of John the Baptist and John the Baptist saying, I'm going to decrease, but but Jesus, he's going to increase. And I was thinking about that at the beginning of our passage in where it says, uh, uh, John the Baptist, Baptist was baptizing at Anian near Salem because water was abundant there and because people kept coming out to be baptized. 
Now, John was in the wilderness, and we might feel like we are in the wilderness right now. And John's in the wilderness for a couple reasons. One is the further out you are, the less constrained you are by the norms and by the habits of, of the people that are around you. The second part about that is that he is, in a sense, outside of the religious authorities. He is free, in a sense, to do his own thing. But the one thing that was abundant there in the wilderness was water and people kept coming out. He stayed there because there was water and he kept staying there is because there was a constant flow of people who were dying for good news, who were dying to hear the good news of God's love and the promise that, uh, that John pointed to that says, it might not be fully realized yet, you might not fully see it yet, but God's got a plan and God's gonna see you through, through this and God's plan is bigger than anything that you can imagine. And so John said, you come to be baptized with water, to repent of your sins, and to look at the world differently, to see the world with God-shaped eyes. The reason John was in the wilderness was because people kept coming out. And the reason they kept coming out was because the water was plentiful. The water to drink the water to be baptized in, and the water to wash clean. This, I hope, is good news for you right now. This is what I hope is good news, is that to pay attention to whatever the droughts are in your life, whatever the drought is right now in your heart. If, are you longing for community? Are you longing for connection? Are you longing for a return? Or maybe are you longing for something better? Because that's ultimately what John pointed to in Jesus. And what Jesus lived out and displayed for us is to say, I have come that you might have life and that you might have it to the full. I have come that you might have life and that you might have it eternally, abundantly, that your cup might runneth over. That when you are that dear longing for flowing streams, that God will provide in places of abundance. Now, this is about the time where things wrap up for John. Uh, the, we hear less and less of, of John in, in the Gospel of John. We hear less of it in the Synoptic Gospels as well. But we start hearing more about Jesus. We thank God for John because John pointed the way. But let us never confuse that pointing with uh, the person. Let us never confuse uh, the person who's giving the message or the way the message is delivered with the good news of the living water that comes from Jesus Christ. I pray God's blessing on you this day. I pray uh, that you go back into Psalm 42 and listen to it, read it a little bit more. May it be a comfort to you. And also in, uh, in John chapter 3, listen to the stuff in Nicodemus. Listen to Jesus talk about God's love for the whole world and what that looks like. But also listen to the words that, that John the Baptist said, I'm going to decrease so Jesus might increase. What part of you needs to decrease so that God and God's power and God's strength might be stronger in you this day? May God bless you and may God be with you.